Well, Godesh Properties logged its best ever quarter one pre-sales in Q1 with bookings up nearly 300% YOI. Collections were up 54% as well. They aim to launch maybe 22 million square feet of projects in FY25. Uh, let's ask the CEO and MD of Godrej Properties, not just on the reported numbers because they vary from quarter to quarter, uh, but about what the trajectory is looking like. Gaurav, great. Gaurav Pandey, CEO and MD of the company, joins us with us on the show. Gaurav, great to have you. Thanks for joining in. You know, at the outset, it becomes very difficult to comment on a real estate company's numbers because there is sales, there is pre-sales. They change very, very differently from quarter to quarter. So yeah. I will only stick to the qualitative aspect. Did the quarter go as per expectations? And are you prepped up for better showing after what you've done in quarter one, which presumably was your best ever quarter one pre-sales? Thanks, Iraj, for having me. Uh, yes, you know, uh, you know, this actually has beaten our internal estimates. We're very frank. We did expect a great quarter one start. Uh, but, you know, some of the launches that we hit the market, especially just to give you some example, we had a launch in Bangalore by a project name called Godridge Wood Escapes. Uh, it was, uh, you know, one of the most exciting launches for us. But just to give you some context, Bangalore as a business, South Zone, as we call it, did about uh, 2,500 odd crores in FI24. So, you know, you would assume a great launch, but to what extent, right? And this launch itself did 3,150 crores. It did higher than four year sales of the entire South Zone business for us. So yes, uh, a great amount of product obsession is leading to that. And I think this is going to be a very exciting year for us because usually our quarter ones are very, very slow. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, you know, when you look at from a year Y on Y perspective, it's like almost like a 4X kind of a growth. So now with this kind of a head start, the year looks uh, even more exciting. Uh, would it would it be like that on reported revenues as well? Because you know, I mean, your reported revenues, I mean, they show a number of twenty one percent downtake, right? So, how does this even out during the rest of the year, Gaurav? I mean, I, if I want to understand what Godrej Properties could do for FY twenty five or FY twenty four, or the guidance for FY twenty five and twenty six, how do I look at those numbers? Do I look at pre sales? Do I look at these reported numbers, and do they even out? Can you help us here? Sure. So just to give you some context in the accounting treatment from real estate, especially index 115, essentially what happens is that your sales happens at say point X, the recognition of that in terms of a revenue and into the PNL happens when you get occupancy certificates, right? Uh, like the quarter one launches that we all saw were largely uh, emanating from big bang launches. Uh, our yearly guidance for launch calendar was 30,000 crores. We did about 29% of that as launches. So it's a very launch heavy quarter, but from a PL point of view, this will get into recognition when OCs will happen, which is say three to four years from today. Uh, so the challenge is if you see the revenue line uh, for real estate companies, uh, especially the ones that follow project completion method, it becomes a, a bit of a tricky part because you can't really assess PNL because this uh, number on revenue that you're seeing is a comp is an outcome of the OCs of sales that happened maybe three four years back kind of project which were different in terms of its structure different in terms of pricing and different market cycle also many other times right uh, so how do you assess uh, you know real estate companies doing to what extent there are a couple of things you see one is a good way to see is the booking value sort of a, a trend. Uh, not just in isolation, but how is the company doing over a period of time? Uh, that gives you an indication of margin profile that you can expect. Uh, so give you a sense, we did about 7,850 crores in FY22. We did about 12,200 crores in FY23. Uh, and preceding five years of FY22, which is say FY18 was about 5,000 crores. So from FY18 to 22, we grew by 50%, some of which is coming into revenue line item now. From FY22 to FY23, moved to 12,200 crores plus which is like 56% growth. And FY24, we move from 12,200 crores to 22,500 plus crore, which is like 84% Y on Y growth, right? Now, this lag impact in the revenue and the PAT, you will see, say, three to four years from today. So that's one thing. The second thing to see is, you know, this is the first time we have done uh, in our quarter four annual uh, presentation of investors section. We've also published our pro forma PNL, which gives you a sense of imputed margins. So for any analyst who's been tracking the sector, they're able to now assess, they anyways make their own financial mm. model. To yeah, yeah. But, stack up. but with this added information, it becomes a relatively easier way to predict how the accounting part of this business will look, say three to four years from today.
Got it. So, so when I'm looking at your FY25 guidance, for example, right? I mean, on booking value, you achieved 32%, cash collections 20 delivery guidance 18%, business development 15%. Which is it that you would give the most importance to for tracking quarter on quarter, Gaurav? I think it's a combination of all parameters, but let me take a step back, right? There is, in this business, what happens, there are a few fulcrums. If you control those fulcrums, the so outcomes becomes a little predictable. Mm -hmm. One fulcrum is what we call is, for us, raw material is land, right? So if your land buying is happening consistently well, uh, of course, with the net D within the range that is what is stated by any company, you can predict the long-term growth potential of a company, right? So that becomes very important why it's a forward-looking estimate, not from a near point of view, but next year and the year after that. The second fulcrum is your launches, right? Uh, are you launching on time? And how are you, what's your launch performance? Uh, pricing point of view, launch uh, volume point of view, and uh, your ability to perform better than the competition, right? So this is a, becomes a very important in-quarter metric. Every quarter you like to measure that. Uh, but then this is dependent also on the government approval. Sometimes you have an approval delay, the launch moves to the next quarter. So from optically, that quarter results may not show very exciting, but if you run the business and you're tracking the sector, you know, it's a movement of one quarter to the other quarter. So again, that's another fulcrum. The third fulcrum is basically completion of projects, right? When is the OC coming? Yeah, yeah. Because that's counting treatment happens. Now, usually what happens is, uh, if you see our business also, uh, and if you've been seeing Godred properties for a while, Quarter three, and especially quarter four is where the OCs tend to hit. When OC hits, one profit accounting happens, but more than that, some metrics move with that, like collections. Collections are very lumpy in the last stage of a project. Why? Right? Because, uh, you know, it projects after structure completion tend to jump up from every milestone. Uh, so when you have a quarter four, usually you'll see much better collections performance. So, But this is a very interesting uh, quarter one because for the first time, at least the best of my memory, we've seen a dramatic jump from 2,000 crores of last Q1, last financial year, thereabouts, to 3,000 plus crores. So that's an anomaly of, of sorts. So if you've done 20% of your collections in quarter one, doesn't mean that uh, you, you could still beat the guided number because your quarter four is when you Correct. believe the largest collection number will come about any which ways, right? Correct. Correct. Okay, great. Good to know that. Now, uh, I would say H2 for that matter. H2 for that matter, okay. Maybe with some strength in quarter one, but H2, okay. Now, you mentioned a very important point about how land deals, etc., all of that, but while keeping the debt equity ratio in mind, use the term DE, I would love to understand what's the debt outlook that you have with the pipeline that you have and the newer geographies that you're going in. I think we've always maintained, if you've seen our earnings call for the last six, seven quarters, we've always mm. maintained we would want to be in a range of net DE 0.5 to 1 to 1 okay. because we, that's the adequate level to keep a balance between growth at the same time risk management. Our current net D stands at about 0.71. Uh, so we have a good headroom to do over and above that. But we are also fortunate that our operating cash flows have started become very exciting. In fact, if you see our operating cash flows of Q1, they're almost 8x Y on Y, so, uh, close to 1000 crores of operating cash flow surplus that we have. So a combination of operating cash flow and a good net D range that we stated, I think will fuel our sustained growth. Mm. Yeah. It's always good to go into high growth markets. I'm guessing Pune and Bengaluru give you that. But is MMR getting saturated? Actually, quite, you know, interestingly, different markets and different micro markets in the cities, it's like, like stocks, right? Uh, you may say, some may say a mid cap is doing well, but you'll have mid caps doing well also, mid caps doing bad also, right? Something similar in real estate. You have a city doing well, but within cities, certain markets getting heated up, certain markets not doing very well. If I were to just give you a sense of uh, the space at which we are operating right now, uh, you know, from the city's point of view, Mumbai actually is uh, doing uh, quite uh, well for us. Uh, in fact, Mumbai had a lag to uh, price growth. Uh, so if you would read many articles around, say, December of last year, there was a lot of news about certain things not happening very well. Uh, but, you know, we were actually about to hit the ground with a very massive launch in quarter four of last financial year, which is a project named Godridge Reserves, which made the, which was beating all the records of Mumbai real estate ever. It did about 2,700 plus crores of launch. Uh, and in this quarter, we were hoping to open up another tower of that, another phase of that. So I, I would say Mumbai is picking up really well for us. Pune is yet to pick up from a pricing point of view. Uh, NCR is doing exceedingly well, especially Gurgaon. Uh, so if I were to give you sort of a ladder up, uh, Gurga is the fastest enterprising. Next would be Noida uh, and Bangalore together. Then would be Mumbai and then Pune from pricing growth. 
but again these are very generic uh, you know sort of a thing it's within that there are a lot of nuances okay fair god i have uh, one more macro question we've done this more a macro conversation than than a micro but still would love to ask you this uh, there might be a rethink on indexation who knows but if there isn't and if it stays as is what's the impact to your mind to real estate demand if any i think if you divide customers into buckets right and i'll try and simplify as much as i can so let me look at a time horizon of say 10 plus years and this is my own interpretation 10 plus years to say 20 years these are usually very long term uh, people who bought something in real estate again they can be of two sub buckets bucket number one could be people who are looking as end users they were staying in a property and now wanting to upgrade their home you know two bhk to three bhk or a better location or better facilities now for them frankly ltcg doesn't really make a huge impact because you reinvest in fact just to take a step back ltcg has more dramatic the indexation change in ltcg has more impact for long term investments why because in the very short term it doesn't make much of a difference quite the opposite actually makes it beneficial in certain cases so for the long term 10 plus years it does make an impact from an indexation but if you are upgrading your home you are actually quite neutral to that change the second category of long term are people who are investors who look forward to say creating generational wealth or an equity multiple as and you invested x you want to make 3 4x and make a power of compounding now for that uh, there is a dampener from indexation but again you know usually you invest for such a long time therefore you would have an affinity for real estate now it makes it more sticky to uh, plow back the money in real estate from a long term point of view again so i think uh, the benefit of uh, while the indexation is good but the benefit of uh, you know reinvesting i believe still holds true uh, which is why i think there'll be stickiness from the near term which is a short term play 4 to 7 years if anybody is looking at that kind of a tenure uh, you know i think probably it might be beneficial why because in the earlier time uh it wasn't really making any much of a difference from a short term point of view but with the indexation change uh you might actually be able to enjoy some so ltcg percentage change from 20 to 100% you might be able to enjoy more and second you it becomes a little easier for an investor to look at as an asset class when they look at as a comparable to equity because there were so many change uh, look, you know outlooks towards equity what is taxable percentages are different now it looks very similar on top of it you actually now have an opportunity at the time of exit to reinvest and even save ltcg so there's a lot of nuances i think in the very short term there's going to be a bit of knee jerk over assessments but i think 6 to 12 months from today you know for many people this style of approach to real estate would actually evolve and for most i think it might actually be a reasonably good benefit got it okay well uh, got a lovely understanding the nuance a lot more uh, we'll talk specific details in the next quarter because this one has come out smelling like roses so no point trying to pin you down on any point but congratulations and all the thank best you. for the year ahead thank you neeraj pleasure talking to you likewise and viewers thanks for tuning in